Hey everyone. So, your dragon fruit is growing nice, right? It finally reached the top and it's forming a nice canopy and it's looking beautiful. But uh oh, you see these orange spots in your dragon fruits. What do I do? Well, these orange spots are cactus rust. And today I'm gonna show, tell you how to treat them and what causes them and how to prevent it in the future, right? So, in my experience, there's two kinds of cactus rust, right? The first one, are these blisters that usually have clear boundaries right They're like blisters on your plant there's some right there i don't know if you can see it and the second type of cactus rust is what i think legitimately looks like rust like if your plants made of rust your if your plants made of metal and your plant is actually rusting right and it usually looks a lot worse like this you know and it can take over your entire plant um first off i'm going to talk about the blister kind of dragon fruit rust, right? Take this rust. So, uh, these blisters, they're more like an infection or a flu rather than anything else, right? So it's like your plant caught something. And luckily because of that, it's easy to treat. Like for instance, and out of all my plants, only my condor, my guatemalensis plant variety, which is more susceptible to disease, has rust, right? Everything else is fine. And because of that, it's more of a localized infection rather than anything else like the environment or something. And that's good. That makes it easy to treat. So because it's easy to treat, you know, it's easy method. All you have to do if you don't want to go too harsh on your plant is just, you know, get a solution of 50-50 hydrogen peroxide and water in a little spray bottle and just spray these blisters, right? Just spray, these, sp spray the plant on the blisters wherever you see them. And maybe more if you want to prevent it, right? You just do that. Sorry, hold on. I have problems with my phone. So you just do that, right? And your plant should go back to normal. But, uh, yeah, just spray it. And your plant should help clear away, like once a week or something like that. Once or twice a week if you need it, if it's really bad. Right? But if it doesn't seem to go away, then what I like to do is I like to buy something called copper fungicide. I think it's about like $15, $13 a bottle and it really gets rid of it, but it's not organic. You know, it has a lot of chemicals in there which some people don't like for their plants, but it does a job. You know, just spray it once a week with a fungicide or whatever the directions say and it should go away naturally. I've also heard of people using neem oil, just taking a cloth and just rubbing on the blisters, you know, as a more um, immediate source. And I heard it works well, but I never used it. So use that with caution. And that should go away on its own. It's pretty easy to treat. I've had it for a while because I haven't treated my plant and I get lazy. But uh, yeah, you might find that these do not really go away on their own. Next is the trickier of the two to treat. Right, and this was my enemy but um you know i've used copper fungicide i've used peroxide and all that stuff to help treat this stuff and none of it seemed to work and that's before i realized that this type of rust is actually more of a condition or an allergy to the environment rather than an infection or the fungus itself this has to do more about your growing habits than anything right and as you can see i finally started to figure out how to treat it so the, the plant is callousing over and it's finally making all this stuff fall off. Like this right here was like redder. It's like orange and dull and brown. But when it's active, it's red. You know, and now it's finally starting to go away. Thankfully. It's pretty much clear from the base. The base was just like this. And now the base is looking pretty good. But how do you treat it? Right? So. I tried, like I said, to treat this with copper fungicide and the likes. But I found that it didn't go away. And that's before I realized that the problem was not with the plant or the fungus itself, but was actually with the soil. Every time I watered, there was still a bit of moisture left, right? And I would water and water before all the dirt dried up. You know, it's a cactus. It doesn't like too much water. And your cactus is actually not growing by itself in the soil, but in the soil is actually growing a lot of animals, you know, like bugs, insects, alongside bacteria, and especially fungus. And actually, one of the, a couple of species of fungus are actually symbiotic with your cactus and help attach the roots for it to take up water and nutrients. But there's also a bad 
a pathogenic species of fungus that grows in there too. And usually your plant can hold back, can fight it off. But sometimes your plant can get stressed and, and stuff like that. And you'll find that this appears. This is actually the fungus, the bad fungus that has taken over your plant. But why does that happen? Well, that usually happens because there's too much moisture in your soil, right? So what you want to do is you want to dig in your soil. You want to evaluate your watering habits and you want to figure out if you're watering too much, right? If, you, if you're watering before the soil dries out. If you are watering before the soil dries out, then you'll find that you'll get this, right? The fungus loves the really moist environments and it'll thrive and your plant will have trouble fighting it off. But... You know, if you cut back on your watering and you let your, your plant dry out in between the watering, then you'll find that the fungus goes away naturally on its own like that. Like what I did is just cut back on my watering and I let my plants get a little bit thin before I, I water them now. And now the, the fungus is finally starting to die back. Um, other factors that can stress out your plant, you know, because it happens because you also because your plant is stressed and the immune system is weaker, is that, you know, fluctuating temperatures that really stresses your plant high temperatures and a lot of sunlight stress your plant and also just high humidity in general usually just water and temperature stresses your plant and encourages this fungus growth but yeah so go ahead and figure out which of those factors is affecting your plant and then cut back on it and your plant should spring back but you know i've been battling this fungus for a while now probably close to six months or a year and you know, it's not really that bad. I have all this fungus, as you can see. And my plant still gives off, still grows like crazy, you see. And gives off a lot of flowers. So, don't worry about it too much. It's just a thing that happened. It's natural. It's as natural as algae in a fish tank. You know, your plant can handle it. Don't neglect it. But your plant isn't a slouch either. It can really fight it off. Sorry about the helicopter. But yeah. Remember, first and foremost, to have fun growing your dragon fruit and not to, worry, not to worry too much about the little details. But I hope you guys have good luck growing your dragon fruit and good luck in your battle against rust. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, uh, one more thing, actually, before I go. That plant over there was also here, right? I forgot to mention that more than likely, when you see this type of rust... It'll not just affect one plant, but all your plant, because like I said, it's a problem with the environment rather than the plant itself. You know, all these plants had this rust because it was all in this bucket, and none of these plants had this type of rust because they're in a different bucket. You know, so that's another way to figure out. It has to do with your the environment rather than the plant itself. But uh, yeah, all right, guys, hopefully I explained it well. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comments, and I'll try to get back to them. Happy growing. See ya.